Here with us is News Nation's Caitlin Becker and trial attorney and legal analyst Misty Maris. Welcome back, ladies. Caitlin, I'll start with you. What brought us here? Well, Hannah, the final chapter of the Free Britney movement is now closed. Following a two and a half year fight, Britney Spears and her estranged father, Jamie Spears, reaching an agreement over attorney's fees. Now, this effectively puts an end to a protracted legal battle over her controversial conservatorship that has gone on now for more than a decade. The pop star's dad was appointed Britney's conservator by a California judge back in 2008. That was, of course, following several very public, very dramatic breakdowns. Now, under the conservatorship, Jamie Spears had complete control of his daughter's life. He oversaw everything from what she could eat, if she could drive, the money she made, how she spent it, and even her birth control methods. Now, Britney's freedom from the conservatorship was hard won, and it sparked an international free Britney movement from her fan base. The singer begged an L.A. court to release her, saying she was traumatized and held against her will. Britney citing abuses she suffered under the conservatorship, including a recording device allegedly placed in her bedroom by Jamie Spears, as well as being put on lithium that she says made her feel drunk. Britney also claims she wasn't allowed to get married or have more children. By 2021, though, a judge finally terminated that conservatorship. Now, the terms of the settlement remain confidential. However, reports say that Spears has to cough up $2 million to pay her father's legal bills. Well, she really gets nothing out of the deal. Now, her lawyer writing in a statement to News Nation, quote, Britney Spears, Britney Spears won when her fundamental rights and civil liberties were restored. Her lawyer also pointing out that Britney has had a lot of success since the conservatorship ended. She sold over two million copies of her memoir, released new music. But despite that success, concerns about Britney's well-being remain. Obviously, yeah. this infamous knife video, chief among them. Now, the settlement does mean, though, that for Britney, she and her father will not have to go to trial to argue this out, which was supposed to start in May. And, Hannah, it is important just to note here yes, please. that Jamie Spears has denied all of the accusations against him. So, Missy, I'm going to go to you. Like Caitlin mentioned, this last settlement was about money and legal fees. What did we learn in court? So when you're, when you're talking about a conservatorship, the estate, meaning Britney Spears, even if attorney's fees are incurred on behalf of Jamie Spears, the estate pays those legal fees. So in the context of this particular issue, who's going to pay the fees? This was on the way to be to trial in May. And a trial is something where you're going to have to go through every aspect of this conservatorship. Britney Spears and her team were going to argue that there was financial impropriety on behalf of Jamie Spears, using that as leverage to combat some of the payment for these fees. But going through that process, that's why a settlement is a victory. What her attorney said is absolutely true. Going through that process, making the arguments at trial, it's re-traumatizing. So coming to this resolution, even though we don't necessarily know the terms, and it sounds like Brittany might be paying the fees, it gives finality. It ends the whole process so she can move on. I want to stick with you, Misty, because Brittany was in a conservatorship for 13 years, over a decade. I am curious, we showed some of those disturbing videos from Brittany. I follow her, millions of us do. Could those disturbing videos change any court decisions down the line? At this point, this is over, so it would have to be an entirely new proceeding. It's called de novo review. So everything that's already happened, the conservatorship has been extinguished. Now the fee aspect and the monetary aspect has been resolved. So if there were to be any further proceedings relating to a conservatorship, it would have to start from scratch. I doubt we're going to see that. Uh, but of course, the videos could be a cause for concern. But it does not necessarily have to go so far as stripping an individual of all of their civil liberties, of having complete control over their person. Obviously, there's steps in between where family and friends could try and help her without going so far as basically taking over her life. There is so much to talk about, ladies. We're going to move on to Weinstein. He's due back in court this week. We heard Ryan Bass tell us about that. It's the first step of his retrial. What can we expect there, Misty? Well, it, right now, the prosecutors are going to have to think long and hard about whether or not they're going to move forward with a retrial in New York. A couple of reasons. Number one, having the victims have to come forward and testify again, it's something prosecutors take into consideration, the impact on their mental well-being and re-traumatization if they were to retry the case. The other thing is, now the New York courts have narrowly tailored the type of evidence that's actually going to come into the courtroom. So prosecutors have prosecutorial discretion to make an assessment of, okay, if that evidence doesn't come in, how likely is it that we get a conviction? 
Also, we still have L.A. He's still convicted yeah. in California and will serve that sentence, although that will be subject to appellate review as well. So those are the factors prosecutors are going to think about when they make a determination whether to retry the case. Caitlin, I have 30 seconds, but I do want to ask you, what do you think will be different this time around in court for Weinstein? If we actually move forward to a retrial, both sides have said that they do expect Harvey Weinstein will testify in his own defense, and that is something that he has not done up until this point. As you said, though, earlier in Ryan Bass's thing, his health is a mess. So it's a train wreck. train wreck, an actual train wreck. So even if he gets on the stand, I don't know how effective that will be. It's really hard to look at him in any kind of sympathetic way from yeah. any jury. I mean, the man is a sexual predator. Even though this was overturned, he was not exonerated. It was a legal technicality, just like Cosby, and he still has those outstanding sex crimes convictions in Los Angeles. So seeing him as a sexual predator, I don't know how you couldn't if you're sitting on the witness stand. Really fantastic points, ladies. Caitlin Becker, Misty Maris, we appreciate you coming on this Sunday. Thank you.